Hello everybody, thank you for watching, my name is Don. Uh, I want to do, I uh, thank you to all my subscribers, brothers and sisters for watching. I want to do interesting subjects about the Trinity. Should Christians really uh, believe in a Trinity? You know, where God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and some say the Holy Ghost, are equal and they are one. As it says here, there are three divine persons, people believe. Father, Son and Holy Ghost, each said to be eternal, each almighty, and none greater or lesser than the other. And each said to be God. This, I will show, uh, that's, this is not the case. As uh, I've, I've done a video before, proving with scripture that Jesus and God are not, Jesus is not almighty God, but the Son of God. Um, let me, as this is, let me read uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12 about should Christians believe in these false pagan uh, beliefs as a trinity? We should be, this is a, a God's warning. Uh, to mankind. Deuteronomy 12 uh, 28 he was warning the, uh, the Israelites when they would go to a foreign land, foreign country not to take in their their, their religious beliefs and this is what it says verse 28 chapter 12 of Deuteronomy obey faithfully everything I have commanded you and all will go well, well with you and your descendants forever because you will be doing what is right and what pleases the Lord your God here's God warning the Lord your God will destroy the nations as you invade their land and you will occupy it and settle there after the Lord destroys these nations make sure that you don't follow their religious practices because that would be fatal don't try to find out how they worship their gods so that you can worship in the same way. Do not worship the Lord your God in the way they worship their gods. For in the worship of their gods, they do all the disgusting things that the Lord hates. They even sacrifice their children in the fire of the altars. So, so, so do not, it uh, warns uh, Israelites, do not follow their religious practices in a nation's that they invade but unfortunately they've taken on the trinity which is uh, all false uh, let me see let me read something on the on the web this is it. the trinity is an example that of taking away the pagan served and worship their gods and then making it the way of the pagan and pretending to worship the true god in the same way as the pagans do. So the, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica, Micropedia Volume 11 says, The Trinity in Christian doctrine, the unity of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit as three persons in one Godhead. Neither the word Trinity nor the explicit doctrine appears in the New Testament, nor did Jesus and his followers intend to contradict the Shem Shema in the Old Testament. That is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The doctrine developed gradually over several centuries and through many controversies. This is here. And, and it's, let's take a look at the long history of tr Trinitarian pagan gods and pagan worship. It seems like everyone has a trinity except the true followers of Messiah Yeshua. In fact, as we see Christianity was formulated in a pool of pagan beliefs nurtured not in the Hebrew Torah but rather in the schools of Alexandria and meeting place of Eastern and Western pagan religious thoughts and philosophies. The Trinity being the most striking example of doctrines everywhere to be found in the Torah or the New Testament yet was assimilated into Christianity directly from pagan origins. Can you believe that? 
it's got orig uh, pagan origins and it says it in a book called The Religions of Ancient Greece and Babylon Blonia, by A. H. K. Sacy clearly tells us that the Greek philosophical philosophical ideas were de developed in Alexandria, Egypt from pagan mystery religions. So from ancient Egypt they went into uh, the Greek ideas where the Trinity come from. Many of the, it says here, many of the theories of ancient religion mod modified and transformed no doubt have penetrated in the th into the theology of Christian Europe and from and form as it were part of the woof in the web of the modern religious thought christian theology was largely organized and nurtured in the schools of alexandria and alexandria was not only the meeting place of east and west it was also the place where the script theology of egypt was revived by contact with the speculative philosophy of Greece. Perhaps, however, that indebtedness of Christian theology as to ancient Egyptian doc dogma is nowhere more striking than a tr doctrine of the Trinity. The very terms used of it by Christian theology meets us again in the inscriptions and papyri of Egypt. Originally, the Trinity was a triad like those we find in the Babylonian mythology. The triad consisted of divine father, wife and son. The father become, became the son and the son the father through all time and of both alike the mother was but another form. Can you, you can see where the pagan roots come from. And then so we can see the pre the so-called Christian belief in the Trinity stands back to pre-Christian pagan roots. It seems you see you see here the Trinity, ancient Egyptian so-called Trinity, consisted of the god Serapis or Osiris, the goddess Isis, and the child god Horus. In other words. In, in one way or the other, almost every other god was identified with one or the other of these three aspects. Even the sun god Mithras, it says, of the Persians. You see, the ancient, the, it came from a, ancient pagan beliefs, from ancient Egypt and even ancient Babylon. That's where the pagan beliefs come from. It says here that even, the, even Rome, it says here on this, on the internet it says, worshipped Isis, or Horus and Seb. As I said, the Romans also worshipped the ancient pagan uh, trinity of the Egyptians. Like I said, worshipped Isis, Hor Horus and Seb. The round, and you wouldn't believe it that they ate a round uh, wafer thin biscuits let me read it see the round disc wafer ihs called the christogram symbol of isis Hor horus and seb was eating eaten as food for the soul this was integrated into christianity as a wafer used in the, in the eucharist it is round with ihs engraved on it can you believe that and this pagan trinity of isis horus and seb represented by IHS which was then made then made the Christogram for Jesus H. H Christ so can you believe that if you eat the round wafer eaten at the Eucharist in churches it's just the, it's just the pagan worship of the Trinity Isis, Horus and Seb well let me see I have more information uh, this is it on the, uh, the Trinity the new Encyclopedia Britannica said neither the word Trinity or the explicit doctrine as such appears in the New Testament nor did Jesus and his followers intend to contradict 
the Shema in the Old Testament. So, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The doctrine developed gradually over centuries and for many controversies. By the end of the 4th century, the doctrine of the Trinity took substantially the form and it, it has maintained ever since. So from the 4th century, it that's where it came from. Not it's not, you know, at the time of Christ. It's. And the New Catholic Encyclopedia says the formulation one God in three persons was not solidly established, certainly not fully assimilated in Christian life and its profession of faith prior to the end of the fourth century. But it is precisely, precisely this formulation that has first claimed to the title the Trinitarian Doctrine, Dogma. Among the apostolic fathers, there had been nothing even remotely approaching such a mentality or perspective. According to the Encyclopedia Americana, we read, Christianity derived from Judaism, and Judaism was strictly Eutarian, believing that God is one person. The road which led from Jerusalem to Nicaea was scarcely a straight one. Fourth century Trinitarianism did not reflect actually, accurately early Christian teachings regarding the nature of God. It was, on the contrary, a deviation from this teaching. One more bit I'll read. According to the Nouveau Dictionnaire Universal, the Platonic Trinity itself merely a rearrangement of older trinities dating back to earlier people appearing to be rational philosophical trinity of attributes that gave birth both the true three apostates or divine persons taught by the christian churches the greeks the greek philosopher plato fourth century bc conception of the divine trinity can be found in all ancient pagan religions and yeah, and then they stole it for the ancient Egyptians, the Trinity, as I showed you before, and I bet you uh, from ancient Babylon, where it originated probably from, even before then. So. One scripture that Trinitarians use to just to prove they claim in the Trinity is First John f uh, five seven and eight, which says in the King James reads. For there are three that bear records in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness to, to, in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Right. Now, according to, regarding this as a, the, the, the Trinitarian passage, Textual critic F. H. A. Scrivener wrote, We need not hesitate to declare our conviction that these disputed words were not written by Apostle John. So where did they come from? That they were originally brought into Latin copies in Africa from the margin, where they have been placed as a pious and orthodox gloss over verse 8 that from the latin they crept into the to two or three late greek awkward codexes and hence into the printed greek text a place to which they had no rightful claim and that's from a plain introduction to the criticism of the new testament you see it's it's not true there was just a miss it was added there later. It's just like John 10:30, which concludes, uh, you know, me and my, the Father are one, just like the disciples are one. They're in an agreement in thought and de deed and purpose. Uh, you know, and it's not unusual for the Holy Spirit to uh, be personified. Uh, as I said. It's just made out to be a person. As it, uh, in the Bible is, is refer, the Holy Spirit is referred to a helper, a comforter, advocate. It teaches, 
bears witnesses, speaks and hears. It sounds like it's a person, the Holy Ghost. But in fact, it says here, uh, that the first text cited here employ a figure of speech. It's just a figure of speech personifying the God's Holy Spirit, his active force. For it, just like, as it says, wisdom, the Bible also personifies wisdom, sin, death and water and blood makes it like a real person but they're not so hopefully uh, you liked uh, uh, this video and please uh, worship God in spirit and truth and uh, repent through Jesus name to gain salvation thank you very much